TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on the post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, we are uh, partnering with the Blueprint Mastermind. This is one of the recent episodes. Not one of the recent, but, you know, one of the episodes with all of us as the team. Um, there should be another one dropping soon. So if you could just go over there and, you know, leave a like, comment on this one. Let us know that you like it. Don't forget, man, my, all my old videos are over here on Facebook. And I do got a Patreon where we're about to start a new show. This is England, I think. And then uh, we're starting another one next week. So tune in, man. Link down in the description, man. We got real heat over there on Patreon. Ah, let me put this, man, because this is, I got to put this. Nobody else do but me. Um, I spent 70K a year on my heroin addiction. Not me. This guy. And he's here to tell our story, man. You know, I like these, man, because, you know, by telling your story, you can save somebody else's life, man. You never know. So let's get into it, man. They could have put an X. X here. I had a great childhood. Uh, everything I could ask for, really. Um, you know, growing up on a... On the outskirts of Cardiff, you know, um, I had friends who probably didn't have their mother around or their father around, you know, um, single parents. But um, my family, great household, uh, they're still together to this day. And we had everything we wanted, really. Um, in the summer, we played sports. Um, they made sure I was involved in every activity. Anything I asked for, if they couldn't get it, they'd get the next best thing. And yeah, I got fond memories as a child. When did you start going down a direction? When did you start taking drugs? Um, I started taking uh, drugs at like the age of 16, 17. I remember in high school, I was really against drugs. I was anti-drug. My uncle was a heroin addict. Uh, he was in prison for a long time. And uh, I remember my father, my mother, my grand drug drugs at like the age of 16, 17. I remember in high school, I was really against drugs. I was anti-drug. My uncle was a heroin addict. Uh, he was in prison for a long time. And so you had seen it a lot. So you had seen it, so you were directly against it because of what you have seen. Okay. Don't forget, man, shout out to the first responders, man. Y'all really make these videos what they are. So continue to hit that like button, man. I can't ask for no more, man. I just need 100 likes. And uh, I remember my father, my mother, my grandmother, I used to see him go through a lot of stress. We used to go prison visits and stuff. So I always kind of was drummed into me that drugs were bad. Um, my dad was anti-drug, never smoked the fag, never, you know, would drink on the weekends, but, you know, not much. And um, I don't know, it, it, it kind of bad. Um, my dad was anti-drug, never smoked the fag, never... What do you mean by that? You know, would drink on the weekends, but, you know, not much. And um, I don't know, it, it, it kind of, I was in, coming into my last years of high school, uh, really where I started to venture out on taking drugs, started with cannabis. Um, and a lot of people would say, this isn't true, but it was a gateway drug for me. I had a few problems. Let me, what do y'all think about that? Like, let me know in the comments. Do y'all really think cannabis is a gateway drug? I don't think it is. I, I, and I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke that. Like, for, like a lot of y'all think I do, but I don't. I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't like how it made me feel. And keep in mind, where I am in America, it is legal. So, medically, mer medical wear marijuana is legal in Florida, but I'm from Chicago, and medicinal and leisurely, it's legal. So I never did it. I don't like it. Uh, with myself, I had my mental, I had a severe mental health. Uh, issues and I put my um, pathway to drug drug addiction into into three ways and that was bad timing the the people I hung around with and my mental health Peer pressure. Um, I was diagnosed with severe OCD uh, and ADHD uh, but what people uh, think when you say OCD <coughs> is 
you, you know, you're a clean freak, you know, and that's clearly not the case for me. Um, if you went to my bedroom or in my house, <laughs> you wouldn't think I had OCD, but um, it's more of a ritu ritualistic thing. Uh, and I used to get obsessed with certain things and I always used to have like these anxious, paranoid thoughts. Um, and if I'd have to do these certain rituals and these rituals could, you know, differentiate day to day. Um, and if I didn't do these rituals, then uh, I'd automatically uh, think something bad would happen either to myself or to a loved one. You know, when we're all young, like we, we the pressure of, of, of growing up, being in the crowd and stuff, we don't want to admit we've got problems. We don't want to open up that we've got problems. So instead of saying I've got problems, uh, you know, I would try and find- Probably back then, man. Now, 2022, 2020, 2019, since like one of those years, 2019 maybe, uh, I give the youth one thing. The youth has been letting people know when there's something wrong. So salute to that, keep that going on. The next step is actually getting the help. Ways to mask it and, and drug use is, it, that, that was what the drug use was for. And how old were you when you first took heroin? Um, I was seven, uh, just turning 18 when I first tried heroin. Um, I was 19. Wait, 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 that's not funny, wait. You went from not doing anything, jump dead in the weed in H? A full on quote unquote smackhead. Can you talk us through the sort of the hold it can have on you? It just 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 runs your life. You you you're a prisoner to it. You you can't do nothing. Um you know all, I, I, you know, and for the first couple of years, I tried to uh, blend in, tried to cover it, but you might think you've got it under control, but you just clearly haven't. Um, and, you know, you can't go down the pub, you can't go out on the weekend with the boys because you have to slide off because you need to use, or, you know, it just takes all your normal social events away from you. And uh, that's just a little, that's, you know, that's just talking about the effect of what it has, doing normal things. Uh, the abnormal things I were doing to get the drug was was horrific. Have you registered? Is he gonna tell us the abnormal things he was doing to get that to get it? That's gonna be crazy. Let me hear this. Um, and the first five years of addiction, I used to go around uh, like universities and stuff and pretend I was a lost student and blag people for money. Um, yeah, I used to make quite a lot of money doing that. Um, and then it was only towards the second half of my addiction um, when I started to become a, a, a shoplifter. And again, up and down the country shoplifting. Um, but it was just pure desperation the whole time. Sheer desperation. And how many times have you been in prison? 10, 11 times. 10 I know I've been. Every time I went to prison, I, I did try to change my way. It was, it was a time for me where I thought I needed to change. And every time I was in prison, I always looked at like, you know, I'm gonna get out this time and sort my life out. Every single time. Um, there was a few times I'd have to go in there and do a detox, do a cluck off the heroin. Um, but uh, there was times as well that I was on a methadone script whilst in there. Um, the drug used to help someone stop taking heroin by reducing the withdrawal symptoms. But sometimes you can get addicted to methadone too as well. And then once you're back on the street, you want the harder effect and backslide back into the H. And that don't help anyone. A methadone script to me is um, is kind of just dumbing you down as a person, I would say. I've been on probably 15, 20 methadone scripts, kicked off, started again, where it's just a, a vicious circle type of thing. So, um, yeah. Who is this? Who is this? Watch out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all telling me this look like this, this is not, there is no way that this is the same person. Where 
Where's the middle of your beard? No, no, I'm not being funny. I'm asking a real question. This is the same person. Hey, y'all need to stay drug free, man. If hey, listen, don't do this stuff. Stay off of it, man. Let this man's story motivate you. Let this right here motivate you. This is wild. I'm impressed that he's off of it and looking much healthier. Yeah. Every time I come out of prison, I was, you know, back to using. How did you stop? Um, so obviously lockdown was, it was different. It was, it was new for all of us, but especially for someone like myself who's a shoplifter. A lot of the retail stores were shut. So um, we were traveling around to hit like uh, small cooperative shops. And uh, it was just getting on top. It was really, it was, I was really manic at the time. This was like probably the worst I was. I was a different person. Um, and I knew my body was, was deteriorating. At the time I was on a 90 mil methadone script and I was using two, two to 300 pounds worth of heroin and crack a day. I never injected heroin. using two in at the time I was on a 90 mil methadone script and I was using two two to three hundred pounds worth of heroin and crack a day oh two to three hundred pounds like dollars like money I thought he meant like LBS like what I never injected heroin I always smoked it so I always had a problem with my lungs while I was smoking so much and um, uh, one day in it was uh, <coughs> September, the end of September, coming up to August. We're, we're just past two years. And um, basically, a friend of mine passed away, who was my co-defendant. He used to drive me around everywhere. Um, he passed away. And the same day he passed away, I got rushed to hospital. Um, and when I, when I went into hospital, I, I come around uh, a day later with all needles in me and stuff, uh, you know, drips and stuff in both arms. And they said I had uh, sepsis and pneumonia. Um, and I thought I was going to die like, you know, I've many, many times before, like I've, I've been in bad situations where I've had to do detoxes and, you know, I've been in hospital beds, prison beds, done all the stuff where I thought we'd, you know, this is the last time, but I, I genuinely knew this was the last time. Um, so yeah. whatever m uh, my friend and I were using it, it obviously had an effect on us. When I was in hospital, I kind of had this like awakening. It sounds cheesy, I know. Um, but I, I, I had this type of awakening and I, I knew this would have to be the time I had to change. I couldn't go through another, another, another detox. And so what was different about either your treatment or your mindset for the time that you, that you got clean last? His boy passed away and he was almost gone too. That's the difference, right? Gotta be, right? Um, this is probably the, the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, and I think it's an amazing thing. It's something called Buvidal, it's a new drug, basically, that's been tested uh, here in the UK, especially in Wales. Um, I actually, it's funny, I actually heard about the drug uh, whilst I was still um, coming up to where I almost went into hospital. I heard about this drug that was gonna be getting rolled out during lockdown for um, chaotic uh, users like myself. But then when I went to hospital, um, and I was, you know, really ill in hospital. The nurse came to me and he said, look, we'll keep you on your methadone script, but you're gonna have to go every single day now, uh, include, uh, including weekends, um, or go try this Bouvidal. And um, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, I'm, I'm two years clean now. For the first time in my adult life, I'm, I'm free of drugs. So how does Bouvidal work? So it's, it's an injection uh, in, in, into the muscle. Um, you can have it in your buttocks, your arm. I has it in my stomach because I've, I've got a bit of a belly there. So, um, and, and what it does is it basically um, releases a blocker into your system, which lasts for 30 days. So with methadone and with Subutex and other opiate substitutes, they last 24 hours, you need a new dose. And there's a lot of bad effects with these, these drugs as well. With methadone, you can still use on top because it's an opiate. Um, also with methadone, um, it ruins your body. There's this, this myth that like, you know, uh, it gets inside your bones. Uh, it, it feels like that. Um, also, 
it makes you actually feel like you're still using drugs because it gives it's very strong. So if you are trying to get clean and they can put you on a methadone script, you're just gonna feel like you're a heroin addict still. There's that that famous word for methadone, they call it the liquid handcuffs, where um, you know, you're a prisoner to it. This Bouvardal, um, straight away, it, it helps a lot of people uh, in the sense of getting their life back. Not only that, a lot of these places where you go to pick up your methadone um, is full of other people who are... I like this one, man, because this, this one right here probably already... How many days has this been out? This one has been out for one day. 103,000 people. You don't know what hundred, who the 103,000 people are that's seen this. But I guarantee, in that hundred and three thousand people that sink this, they went and got tried some of that booble dome. This video alone might have curved somebody's life expectancy. I remember my father, my mother, my grandmother. I used to see him go through. Um, I, I'm what. What is the absolute number one easiest way to make money online in 2023? Well. It's it basically um, releases a blocker into your phone you can still use on top body using drugs because it gives it's very strong so if you are trying to get clean and they can put you on a methadone script you're just going to feel like you're a heroin addict still there's that that famous word for methadone they call it the liquid handcuffs where um, you know you're a prisoner to it this Bouvardal, um, straight away, it, it, it helps a lot of people uh, in the sense of getting their life back. I've never heard of this at all. This is needed in Florida right now. I can go to the park. It's a park maybe two, three blocks away from me on the, on the hood side. Of the, so I live right in between the hood and the, the rich people. So I don't know why, but like I always find a spot that's like that. It's just comfortable for me. Um, but like if I go to a park like down the street, it's like heroin park. That's what I call it. Like it's a bunch of heroin uh, addicted people in there and they could really use this man because, you know. Not only that, a lot of these places where you go to pick up your methadone um, is full of other people who are on drugs. Uh, a high percentage of them don't really want to come off drugs. They're using methadone as another way of, of a high. So um, um, my dad used to say, is, uh, these places where you pick up your methadone, it's like uh, going to uh, a Gamblers Anonymous in the, in the Coral or an, an AA meeting within the weather. Coral, a betting shop chain, Weatherspoon, a pub chain. Spoons. For those that are on, that like yourself, Bouvardal, if you did decide to go up, go out and get heroin again, would it, what effect would it have? Yeah, it, it, it would do nothing. Like, you might as well, uh, you might as well just get a lighter and just burn your money. Literally, like, it's, it's, it, it does nothing. The, the difference with Bouvardal, other than methadone and Subutex, you don't get a buzz on it. It's not like uh, methadone where you kind of feel a bit, this, this is a total block. It, like, you feel totally normal again. And that can be tough for people who have suppressed their mind with such a strong painkiller for so long. A lot of people in addiction are hiding from trauma or they're hiding from things they've done whilst on drugs. So it's masking problems. And, and, when, and when, you know, you take that, that blanket off, people struggle. What was that first month on it like for you? Yeah, it wasn't easy, uh, I'm gonna be fair. Um, like I said, uh, when I, it was the first month, my, my friend just died and um, I've got all these emotions coming back as someone who's coming off heroin as well, um, which you do anyway. You know, I'm my uh, I'm having wet dreams. You know, I'm feeling like life's going too. Qu my uh, I'm having wet dreams. What do you mean by that? Because I got like I got two different things in my head. You know, I'm feeling like life's going too quick for me. I'm thinking about everyone I've robbed. I'm thinking about everyone I've hurt in my life. Uh, I'm thinking about my mate passing, trying to put blame on myself. Like it weren't, it weren't, it wasn't comfortable for me. So I can imagine other people who go on it, it might not be the most comfortable, but when you get past that first month, it's amazing. It, it, it's literally, I, 
I live a normal life now. How long uh, did you use for in total? Uh, well, it was coming up to 13 years, 12 years, um, if you include this one. I first tried it at 17. Do you ever think what, what it was about you that put you down that path? Yeah, like, it's, you know, um, I always say, like, um, I've been, I said something recently uh, about how, like, we try and dig for trauma. Like, when, when you go to see, like, a doctor or something, they'll, they'll tell you to, like, <coughs> tackle the root problem. And because, like, I was never, you know, I had a good childhood. I was never abused as a kid. It's not like, you know, um, someone in my family, you know, it was like a tragic death. And I could never find out what the problem was. Um, and that's kind of why I carried on using, because I didn't really find out until towards the end when I started, you know. Yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm listening to your story and I don't see the problem still. You know, coming off the drugs that I realized that like, it, it could be the littlest of things that, that make you um, take drugs and, and have mental health issues and stuff. So um, when I look back, it, it was definitely my mental health and the decisions I made as a young child whether it was a small thing or a big thing. I now work for um, a company called Kaleidoscope, uh, who are based in Newport. I'm now employed within my city of Cardiff with a project called Voices Action Change, and it's all about co-production, service user involvement. You know, it was only two years ago I was actually on them streets running ragged, so a lot of them know who I am. They've seen me at my... Honestly... When he just said that two years ago, I was on those streets running ragged. Believe him, y'all. Let's let me remind y'all. This is not cap. Now, anybody can change. You see me at my worst. They know. You know, it was only two years ago I was actually on them streets running ragged so a lot of them know who i am they've seen me at my worst they know i'm trustworthy and uh we're just trying to change um the way we run services and have more of an involvement from people within services there's just a massive stigma around uh drug users drug addiction junkies uh that's what needs to change Y'all don't even like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells, man. If anybody heard of that boobladone or have any experiences and want to get it off their chest in them comments, let it know, man. I'm replying to everything on these ones, these type ones. I'm gone, though.